All right, check this out, everyone. Uh, this is a treat of a game. And so often when you have Mega Random, you get some unique situations. In the red, we have Doubt. Doubt, legendary player. You probably know him. And Tato, his best friend on the other side here. Uh, it's Spanish versus Mayans. And Tato says, good morning, beast. And Doubt says, don't talk to me. <laughs> so if that doesn't give you, if that doesn't clue you in on their relationship, uh, I don't know what will. This is an incredible Age of Empires 2 game that genuinely has everything. And they started off with houses. I think three houses. Yes, three houses. And they started off with towers. Now, this can happen on Meg Random. You don't know how much gold is going to be out there. You don't know how much stone is going to be out there. There's a lot of unknowns. But Spanish versus Mayans, probably not a matchup that's too bad for Spanish here since the Spanish have some towers and they're further away from each other. The map reminds me of uh, Highland, uh, which can produce some really long games if you've ever seen it. A Highland, there's one crossing in the center. The players have the opportunity to fight on water and then uh, expand on land. Uh, as far as the gold goes, mm, trying to do the math, but it doesn't seem like there's tons of gold. Uh, but you do have three relics on each side. A total of six relics and trust me when i say the build up on this one is going to be crazy uh, what i'm thinking is is worth to do a few things so the first thing you could do is, and it'd probably be easy if you're doubt but you could wall up the center area if you're worried about them being aggressive you could wall up another thing you can do is you could dock so i think both players are out here with their scouts to try and determine if it's worth it to dock normally they're going to want to see some type of a deep fish I think the walling thing is probably a little excessive for this level because it's just that that's a lot of wood that you're investing into walls and then they could always just break through it anyways. So here comes Tato. Tato out to dock. Doubt sees this and the eagle is stronger than the scout in Dark Age. So Doubt's going to try and be annoying. And Tato has already pre-walled his villager here. So Tato will be completely fine and Doubt is going to dock over here. You know what's so nice about this, though, guys? Because they start with houses and with towers, it's so easy to uh, to play greedy. Like, if you want a fish boom, you don't have to worry about affording houses now, too. So you're going to pump out fishing ships no problem. And then if you want to... Granted, for Tato, it looks like the towers don't protect as much. But if you want to play defensive, it's so much easier to play defensive. Like, I think Doubt's towers are probably ideal. Because he has a tower protecting his wood. And he has a tower protecting his gold. And Doubt also has cows. Both players do. So there's 150 food per cow. Plus you've got the boars. And there's two of those. Plus you've got the deer. And you even have some berries. So it should be... Whoa! Have they had two scouts this whole game? What the... Oh, I'm so embarrassed. They started with two scouts. I am so... I am so sorry. Normally... I would re-record this, and I would notice that there was two scouts, and I would talk about how important two scouts is, because villagers could straight up die when there's two scouts. However, I'm doing the Games of the Week stream, this is live, and so I've already embarrassed myself in front of a bunch of people. Wow, two scouts. Alright, well that makes a difference. That definitely makes a difference. And I think rushing Feudal Age could actually make sense if you have two scouts, because at least with these... Uh, these scouts here, they're going to be a whole lot stronger than Doubt's army in just a bit. How many deep fish are out here? You've got salmon, salmon, salmon. You've got three on this side. You've like five or six on the other side. It doesn't feel like the fishing is necessarily going to be too good long term. But having the center river is definitely going to help with control. Tato going to berries now. Interesting to see him doing that. I think Doubt's going to go on the way to Feudal, and there goes Doubt. So, different situations, probably random civilizations, Spanish versus Mayans, good Civ matchup, a fun Civ matchup. I think both Civs could give the others problems. Mayans are definitely the preferred Civ on most maps, though. But Mayans don't have as good a navy, and uh-oh, Tato forgot here. This is what those eagles can do, and Tato should lose his villager. Now, he's really good with quick walling. And we're not going to see it here. Because <laughs> uh, he completely forgot, apparently. Looks like he's using... Oh, he's pushing in deer with both scouts! What the... 
What a beast. All right, pushing in a deer with this one. Also just gonna push in a deer with this one. I feel like everyone who can't even push in deer and manage their economy with one scout is so jealous of Tato right now. And Tato is not on the way to feudal age. Tato has realized there's food here. And Tato is going to take all of it. He's happy with the cows. He's happy with the berries. And he's happy with whatever fish he's been able to get so far. Doubt is almost out of the salmon here. So he's fighting for fish where it's not really going to be that much fish here long term. Though he can figure it out. And Tato's going to push in the final deer. And this is Tato going fast castle. All right. Fast castle for Tato. Now, I love this because there's pros and cons to the situation. Yes, Doubt is going to take control of water. And he is going to be ahead in eco units because he has fishing ships. And Tato's probably going to lose his. There's going to be four eco that Tato has on your screens right now. It's not working. Yeah, that's all very good for Doubt. But on the flip side... Now it's just going to be in feudal age then. Like, and there's not a ton of fish out there, so now it doesn't hugely benefit in the long term. The other thing would be, you have Tato. Tato's going to go fast castle. And you would think that Tato's going to get to one of the best unique units in the game in Conquistador. But, how does he get them across? He won't be able to transport unless he makes a transport ship and hides it. Dow has the potential to control this with Navy and maybe even wall it up, which I think would be a really smart move, by the way. So there's pros and cons to both situations. Anyways, here comes the fire galley for Dell. We knew this was going to happen. And so I think what I would do in Dell's position is I would stonewall the middle right now. Now, some of these games that I do for games of the week and they eventually hit YouTube, some of the games I have seen, this game I have not seen which is pretty obvious because of the whole two scout situation. Now, just checking to see if Tato has another dock, which is a really good thing to check. He didn't see another dock. He doesn't even really need to see and scout Tato's resources to know. With the Spanish, this is most likely going to be Fast Castle. Tato with a little bit of creating, creative walling towards his tower in the middle. Uh, he... He might expect some pressure. He doesn't know for sure. And now Tato is going to kill these eagles from Doubt. Good work from him. Doubt's going to turn around and attack that one, but it's already too late. Doubt's eagles are now done. All right. Do you guys remember the first month or two of the Definitive Edition when Highland was in the map pool? Does anyone remember that? Also, this is Cheeky from Tato. <laughs> Tato's going to take what food he can from this thing of fish. That's funny. That's very cheeky. I mean, he might lose the fishing ships, but even if he loses the fishing ships before dropping off the food, then Doubt won't have that food. But yeah, so for those that didn't, that weren't around for the whole Highland situation, uh, we had consistently players going two hours deep into games. It's so hard to finish off games in Highlands. And it, it, people got tired of it really, really quick. So they decide the devs realized, okay, we probably shouldn't put that into the map pool. But Mega Random has kind of given us something similar. I don't mind it every now and then. I actually think long games in Age of Empires is what makes it great. Um, but I would say, like, the main thing is you're going to need some transports if you want to finish someone off here, guys. Like, you, you can't always just run up the gut. It's very difficult to, to rely on that in the late game. So having sneak villagers, sneak bases can sometimes be all the difference. Or make all the difference. Good job from Doubt. So Doubt, he knows there's fish down here now. And so he wants to use his eco. You can see, Doubt's got nine fishing ships. So he's got, he's well ahead in eco. And so he's got plenty of food income. And Doubt has been able to pull off a fast castle as well. And he didn't go for Stonewall, but I think he's just going to drop a castle of his own. Here comes Tato. Walking towards the middle of the map. And this is probably going to be on the thumbnail of the YouTube video. I, I'm not really sure. I don't know where it's going to go yet. But I feel like a castle right here just looks perfect for a thumbnail. Tato! Right by the tree. Come on, man. Okay, that's, that's slightly less visually appealing, but that's fine. Castle next to the shoreline. So now this gives Tato some options. If... He castled back here, and he ran up to the middle. Then the navy could hit him. The navy could deny him from docking. But a castle next to the shoreline means that he can always dock here if he wants to. 
All right. Doubt buying the stone. I think Doubt does not see that the castle is going up. Doubt will be completely fine with the food income for now. Granted, he'll have to transition into farms. And he knows that Tatsu's been in castle for a bit. So he knows that Tatsu could maybe have conquistadors coming out. And so he's going to drop a castle here. Now notice for Doubt, as his tower actually snipes a scout. Not bad. Doubt doesn't have a single farm, nor should he right now. But I think you do have to think about that long term if you're Doubt. Tatsu's been transitioning into farms. The difference here, though, is conquistadors cost food and gold. So conquistadors are probably the stronger unit. Oh, I forgot to change my mods. I think the gunpowder is going to look a little bit different. But yeah, a Conquistador is probably stronger than Plumed Archer in early castle, at least in low numbers, but they're also much more expensive. Uh, Darcy, the reason Tatsu didn't run across is because there were, you never know if Doubt's going to make a demo. Plus, he had the fire. So Tatsu just didn't want to take any risks there. Doubt realizing what's happening here. He's got to run away. He loses a plumed archer. And Doubt just going to scramble down this TC quickly to protect this area. You know, Doubt is pretty well protected right now. He's got towers. He's got TC. He's got castle. And Tats is going to be looking for openings. But I don't think he's going to find too much just yet. So I think his concern is, okay, I can't kill his villagers. I think I could probably shoot down his boats. He's going to heal up that Conquistador. Very weak conk. Got hit by the castle. He's going to heal up inside now. And he's going to he's gonna dare to walk across with a vill. And here he goes. So th this is actually a really good idea from Tato. Killing villagers would be great. But if you can't kill villagers, probably just kill the boats. And so it's also not bad for Doubt because Doubt can now transition into farms. And Doubt's adding the third TC. You've got to expect he's going to farm pretty soon. Plus, Doubt has an opportunity to deny the Siege Workshop, but let's see if Doubt notices this. I think he will notice this, and Tato's villager notices that she's been noticed, so she's going to notice and head back home and give her people notice that there's an army there. Now, the fishing ships here, they will just drop off the food at the dock. That's how it works. And so Doubt forgot about it, and Doubt's going to take some losses, and suddenly, Eco's not looking too bad for Tato. Guys, he's on one TC, though. He does not have the second TC yet. I think he's going to add the TC in just a second. All right. So, the Plumed Archer only costs wood and gold. So, you're able to spend uh, all that food. Add villagers out of the town centers. Doubt really needs to farm right now. His, his farming eco needs to be set up here. He's got 10 on food. He's got 32 on wood. So, you've got to think he's going to farm in a second. But... You know, archers do benefit from ballistics. Also, Tato has three relics. I just noticed that. We got all three relics on his side really quick. Gunpowder units do not get affected by ballistics unless you're Portuguese. And even then, it's in the Imperial Age. So it just feels like the plumed archer is getting a bit stronger. Easier to mass them. Plus, you're not spending food, which means you could have some really good imp times. But Tato, man, he's killed so many boats. And again, it's just not the most efficient food eco at this stage doubt some monks are out here for tato nine range on the monks so he could get conversions but these conks man they're super tanky one gets converted tato chooses to back away man if tato just had that siege as he deletes the workshop now and makes it over here if he just had the siege i think things would be so much better for him a doubt i think a little slow with the eco transition at least based on my my liking but he's completely fine here and this is shaping up to be a pretty good game. You've got players on either side of the river here. They're aware of each other. They know the situation here. Shot it. Fishing, fishing boats, maybe acting as scouts. <laughs> Tato doesn't see Doubt, but he knows Doubt is there. And Doubt doesn't see Tato, but Doubt knows that Tato's there. And I could definitely see a world where we maybe see another castle on the shoreline. For either player. Doubt just, he has to respect the fact that Tato might try and do something else here. So he wants to get, wants to get some value from these attacks. But as you can see, when the conks hit, they hit, man. Plume 5 plus 2 attack, the conks 16 base attack. Conk Manganel is one of the hardest compositions to stop in the game. 
And Dal choosing to pick his spots where he can't get kills, but he hasn't been able to get a kill over the last few moments. He splits away. Apologies if the projectiles look really silly. Shot it. I just love how Tato's healing up. And he is on two town centers. Now, so the reason that Doubt has the Vill lead is because of how cheap the plumes are. And yes, the plumes can be really good. But Tato just continues to force the issue. Normally, it's like, you know, 10 conquistadors against 20 plumes. But not this many conquistadors against this many plumes. It's just been Tato's approach. He knows the army control is going to be important. See? Both players healing up their armies, which is amazing. And these guys just respect each other so much. They know how good the opposition is. And Doubt, with the with the non-micro micro there, that was actually quite good. And look at that from Doubt. He takes out the Siege. He also gets a conversion. He also takes out a Monk. Now, if he stays in this fight, he might end up losing it. But look as he, as he hits and runs here. That's not too terribly bad for Doubt. Of course, Tato has killed a lot more in this game, but he's killing cheaper units plus fishing ships. And I, I just love the amount of healing we're seeing now. And the monk gets picked off in doubt. All he wants right now is he wants another castle. Maybe here is where he'll place it, but he really doesn't want... Yeah, there it is. He really doesn't want to give up this area of his base, but I think he has to for now. All right, so Tato doesn't see that, but he, he knows he can't go this way, right? He's going to try and go this way. That's why I said Doubt's Castle here would make a little more sense. But I think then Doubt would lose the stone, which he doesn't want. And Tato chooses to run down here. Doubt had actually added a few more fishing ships, which is kind of funny. So he adds the fishing ships, and he he's just getting as much food as he can. And Tato's going to say, no, we dealt with that earlier. I don't want to deal with that. And so you look at Tato's eco. Now Tato goes to the third town center and realizes this is going to go late. And it's been a really good game so far. Problem is, Doubt's probably going to be in the in the Imperial Age faster, and just getting Bracer Chemistry, not even getting Elite Plume Darcher, would mean that the, the ranged units become significantly stronger than the Conks. So Tato's got to take some good fights here. He's got to force some some, uh, some good engagements. Doubt's going to sneak down here with two villagers. Doubt does see the siege now. This is what I mean. A castle here would have been a whole lot better for this, these town centers. But, oh, the town center, or the castle, sorry, takes out the Manganel. There is another one coming in here for Tato, so Doubt's got to be a little Shot. careful. But Doubt, Doubt's in a sweet spot here. He's got 81 economy. He's got 35 military. And he tried to stonewall this up. That's not going to be completed, however. Tato could very easily take out that stonewall. Let's see, one, two... Three, four, maybe five volleys? Sick. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if you run it, want to run in here, though. It probably makes Tato think that there's something valuable here, I guess. It means that Tato doesn't have to hit the castle fire. Oh, man, these armies are so cool, man. And look at the dodging from Tato. What? Dodging ballistics. As he will add another TC. What I love about Spanish is how you can catch up. With important aspects of the game, like building castles, you build faster. TCs, you build faster. I love how they're able to catch up. It suits them, right? Because they go aggressive with the conks and the mangonels. And then after that, you know, they're going to need that economy. This has been an incredible game so far. My stomach's growling. I didn't actually have any breakfast, so I think we're going to have to have some breakfast after this game. I, I uh, didn't wake up feeling hungry, but I'm, I'm hungry for games! But I'm also, you know, hungry for, for some breakfast as well. Doubt a couple seconds away from his upgrades. Bracer comes in rather quickly. He won't have the resources for a Louis Plumed Archer yet, but you have to think it'll come. There's an opportunity for Doubt to drop another castle here. I don't think he should get ahead of himself. I don't think he should try and place it before those upgrades come in. He wants it here. He wants to kind of trap Tato's army. And he is going to commit to it, and maybe Tato's got to respect Shot it. that that army's going to be strong, but does he respect Doubt's micro? What a weird spot for Tato to be in. I guess, like, he kind of needs to force this. Otherwise, he'll lose everything. And Doubt's castle's at 50%. Bracer's now in. Uh-oh. Doubt. <laughs> Doubt, don't lose your plumed archers. Look at Tato dodge. He is taking losses, though. The problem now is that his army is... 
is separated from his villagers. So I don't know if he'll be able to complete the castle. Good micro there from Delt, as the plumed archers are very strong, as we expected. And in the end, Tata loses two mangonels. He delays a castle, he kills a few villagers, and he gets away with his Kongs. Truly not the end of the world there for Delt. Or for Tata, sorry, as I think he really... Uh-oh. Oh my goodness, Tato, are you serious? You're going to run in here? I think that's so risky. He could get his whole army trapped. But, you know, Tato is not hoping to make conks long-term anyways. I mean, it would have been great if he could keep these things alive, but it looks like they've been destined to die. Maybe he'll take a fight and get as good an engagement as he can get before they end up dying, because he's trapped himself. And, yep, this is, this is what Tato wants. He wants to get in close. I think Doubt should be using his range a little bit more, but as you can see, the plumes mop it up. No problem. Big difference between early Castle Age and early Imp. Look at this, though, guys. Have you ever seen the Legend of I Sit before? Do you remember the Legend of I Sit? Well, the Legend of I Sit liked to go Spanish and mix in cannon galleons. Tato, on the other hand, has been known for one thing out of Docs in particular over his whole career. And that is the demo ship. The first thing Tato does in Imp is click Heavy Demolition Ship. <laughs> so, here comes Doubt. And Doubt's like, all right, we just cleared up that whole army. This is going to be great. And then he sees the docks and he's like, oh, God. What's in there? Is it going to be galleys? What is it? And so he says, you know what? I really need to take out that castle. I hope it's just galleys. If it's just galleys, it's fine. I think this is going to be fine. So he sits his whole army on the shoreline and just sits here and waits for Tato because he figures, I just killed Tato's whole army. A few galleys aren't going to do anything. Now, I think he is expecting something like Light Cav because he is mixing in Halb, which would be the correct, the correct choice. But Tato is repairing that castle. He doesn't want to lose that castle. That's a really important position for him. But it looks like Tato will lose the castle. And losing that castle is going to create a gap in which Dao can run through. Here come the heavy demos. Here come the galleys. And here we go, people. Dao has to run away. But the demos go off and the demos kill a quarter of the plumed archers and all the trebs. And just like that, as it seems like our freaking explosion animations are gone for some reason. That sucks. Just like that, Tato is able to, to kind of hold on a little bit. But the galleys don't even have Bodkin Arrow. So honestly, Tato's, Tato has some catching up to do. And the Plumed Archers boldly stay out here. Tato's getting ship right, which is a good long-term upgrade that makes your ships cheaper and down. What are you doing, dude? Also, the lack of explosions is killing me. I, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. There's a weird bug sometimes in the game where certain explosion animations do not show up. But never seen that with Capture Age. That's kind of disappointing. <laughs> well, demos don't do friendly fire. So I feel like one or two demos on these halves and then you, you keep your docks up. We also now see mass defense for Tato. He's going to go for a tower. He's getting fortified wall. And Doubt's going to try and finish him quickly. This is Doubt's point of view. And here come the demos. And, and Doubt's army is just kind of boom, boom. And Doubt is just kind of trapped here with his army, and I just... If you know Doubt, Doubt is extremely stubborn. So he just... He's this type of player, man. <laughs> like, after I lost my first army, I would never try and break through with more army. <laughs> like, but Doubt just continues to do it. Which is great for our entertainment. But this is just a horrible decision. Holy cow, over the last couple minutes, Tato has gained 100 kills. And now he's working his way up with the upgrades. Now he's getting Galleon. Now he's getting Bracer. Now he's getting Chemistry. And Doubt didn't even Doubt didn't even try to do anything on water. He just wanted to force the issue, finish the game fast. And Tato's like, nope. Oh, man. What was their chat at the start of the game? Good morning, Beast. Which is slight sarcasm from Tato. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. He respects doubt, but at the same time, he doesn't. You know what I mean? 
He Tato gets the the better of the engagements when he plays doubt. They're training partners, but he gets the better of the engagement. So I think the whole good morning bees. He's, he's trolling a little bit, just a little bit. They love each other. Okay, so doubt's trying to think of creative ways to push this. So we saw how good the plumes were, but then the plumes are kind of out of the picture now, right? So. You know, he does have three relics, as do both players. It's also really hard to kill each other because of um, how things are situated right now. Because there's just that one gap in the center. So, Tato's just prepping himself up for late game. He's going to drop a castle here. Just in case, you know, Doubt tries to come on water. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see a castle here. And Tato's going for Paladin already. And now, we have the Cannon Galleons. And Spanish Cannon Galleons fire very quickly. So I think they also nerfed the speed on the Spanish Cannon Galleons, didn't they? Let's see. Okay, that's still really fast. No, no, no. I think instead what it was is they made it so regular Cannon Galleons that are not from Spanish fire faster. So it, it, it brings everyone a little closer to the Spanish. But think about how um, Mayans tend to play on games. The resources last longer. They make archers, they make halbs, they make eagles. Think about Spanish in late game. They have all trash upgrades. They have great navy. They have hussar. They have skirm. They have halb, right? So the problem with, with Mayans in these situations is that they do not have a trash unit to spam. It's only food. And now, like, Doubt just went for the wrong strategy. He just got completely pushed in the center. Push back in the center, I guess, and he's going to try and compete on water. So here he goes. Doubt. Added a bunch of docks. He's going to try and go for Galleon now. He's adding a dock near the shoreline. Not too close to the shoreline, because there's cannon Galleons out there. We have 160 population for both. Heated shot, people! Let's go! Heated shot increases the amount of damage your castles and towers do against ships. Let's go! We see that in Loe the Legends all the time, but it never means anything because they're always doing it on a lands map. So, Doubt, it's like, well, okay, this castle isn't good, but I'm going to add Trebs. It's a good move from Doubt. Doubt should be able to take care of that castle. The castle's working well for Tato, though. As you can see, it's getting a lot of crash, uh, precious kills. Tato will still show up with demos when he has opportunities. And Doubt's just overextending there again. Like, moving out with a ram that's not even upgraded yet is really weird to me. And look how fast these cannon galleons fire. Again, apologies that the projectile is super weird. I have to remove some of these mods. It looks like it's flinging poop right now. Does that not look like a turd? I don't I don't know what it's supposed to be flinging. It's so hard to see it with Spanish. I guess it'd be easier with other sieves. Tato making his own siege. And he's going to try and repair this castle right now. Even just keeping it up a couple more minutes will be important for him. And Doubt has fully focused on water. Tato already has control of water. And now Tato is massing paladins. Guys, this is just like so masterful from Tato. He truly was able to understand. As he's got demos in here. We've got to keep an eye out. He's able to understand how this game would develop. He knew when land was important in Castle Age. And then he knew how to defend from what Doubt was doing in the Imperial Age. And now... He's going for something that could honestly just finish the game. Doubt's trying to come back on water. He's aiming to take out this castle. He will take out the castle. But now the paladins storm in. And Tato gets supremacy, which gives Spanish villagers extra armor. And he's just going to waltz right forward here and take this position. He's going to drop a castle right on Doubt's face. So naturally, what's Doubt going to do? He's going to make helps. Doubt's going to queue up the pointy boys, the counter. Doubt continuing to take the fight here. We have Tato. You're falling behind a little bit with numbers, but now the demos come in. And if the demos get enough engagements, it's tough to do demos against the Galleons. Uh, wasn't the best, but if he gets... Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, if he gets enough engagements, Tato maybe be able to maintain his water control. The Paladins are spreading out, but there's castles everywhere, right? So the Castle Fire combined with the Halbs could be a little tricky, but Tato knows the Trebs are there, and so here comes Tato to take out the Trebs, and five Trebs down for Doubt. Oof. Dang, man. Or I guess it's getting close to Christmas. We watched Home Alone the other night. Like when uh, Kevin says about Buzz's girlfriend. Woof. Ugh. 
I've never heard anyone else say wolf in any other context where it was supposed to be negative, except for Home Alone. <laughs> I don't know if that was a 90s thing. I was too young, but... Wolf. Oh, God. What a movie, by the way. So Tato is just... He, he went from losing control after losing his conks and... To, to gaining control in every single way. I think the only thing that Tato was missing is he needed to have the siege. What would have made this perfect if he had the castle drop and the siege? Because he's now given time for Dal to make siege to push this castle. Which might not actually end up being the worst thing, right? He's got he's got control of these golds for now. So even if he loses the castle, I think gaining that gold will end up being a huge thing for him. As he focuses his attention on the water. You see the, the Galleons paying off for Tato. He's got the numbers. Now he's getting Herbal Medicine, guys. And Herbal Medicine means you heal faster inside of castles. So the Paladin's day is done. They're going to go home and rest. And Tato's now going to stream in Light Cav. Which isn't necessarily all that good against Pointy Boys. But it is it is some offensive presence on land. And it doesn't cost anything but food. So he'll probably get the Hussar upgrade. And so Tato... Controlling water initially, but then switching into land basically gives him... So, so basically, okay, he's been one step ahead, sorry, and I'm really struggling to find my words right now, but he gave up land and took water. And then after taking water, he's now taking land. And then while he was taking land, he took water. You see what I mean? He just continues to swing this into positions where doubt is one step behind. Now, what would be strong for Doubt is maybe a transport ship. If he could transport, get some barracks up here. Raiding with Halbs wouldn't be too bad. And Doubt with so many pointy boys, 180 pop. It's just so hard to finish off games on these types of maps. Yeah, we had two hour long games on the regular when Highland was in the map pool at the start of DE. And I could see this one going on longer as well as Tato's going to prep for his next option. So... Oh no, we've been foiled. The enemy has made pointy boys. Whatever will we do? Tato's thinking, well, I know what to do. I'll just go for champions. So, also, he realizes there's an opportunity for a raid over here. He's going to do that right now. Delt still with plenty of resources in the bank. Delt still with the potential to bring this back, guys. Is he in the best position? Definitely not. But with these resources, could he do it? Definitely. Especially since resources last longer for Mayans. So, in theory, he should have a lot more resources long-term. 70 military versus 70 military right now. It just feels like some of that military for Doubt isn't the most effective. So, I think would be a really good idea for Doubt is Ram and Plume again. Now, I don't know how he's going to be able to push out the middle, but the second he sees Longsword, he should know that he needs more Plumed Archers. I think we're going to see the Q. Yep, there it is. Like, getting Plumed Archers means the champions are going to have some problems. Um, again, I think transporting's key, kind of for both players. If Tato could raid with Hussars and Champions down here, this is where a lot of the wood's going to be long-term for both of them. Here comes Champion on the way. Tato's still behind with some of the upgrades, but he wants to fight now that he's shown Doubt he's doing this. And this is still going to be a really good engagement for him as Doubt waits for the Plumed Archers. Mayans do have good navy. It's just their tech tree isn't as flexible. Isn't as good as the Chinese. And this is why I like try and bring up people who are like, Buff Spanish! They're bad on Arabia. No, Spanish are actually really sick. Especially in team games, too, because they've got their trade bonus. It could, Spanish can be decent in a lot of situations. Now, Doubt doesn't have Elite Plume yet. I think he should click it now. He has the resources for it. Elite Plumed Archer would definitely help. He's now getting guilds. The guilds gives you a greater return from selling resources at the market. This is normally something you research if you think the game's going to go super late. Does anyone know if Doubt has Thumbring right now? I think he must, right? He made an archery range for it. He probably does have Thumbring. So, we have Manganel, Champion, Paladins that are almost fully healed, Bombard Cannons, and Galleons... And the potential for Tato to always make demos. And boom! Big bomber cannon shot there on the plumes. It's almost like Tato knew. 
Almost like he knew exactly what was going to come from this. See? Doubt just pinned back again. We saw early imp. Doubt is very stubborn. And no high level player is going to want to resign. Or even feel like they're dead at 200 population. Doubt goes in there with his plumes to snipe the bomber cannons, but he only got one. He lost a lot of plumed archers. I don't think that's great. But he's also trying to react to this at the same time as the paladins are going to get some big kills there. Whoa! Man, these cannon galleons have so much range. Holy crap. Also, chat, do you know what they're supposed to be flinging? It looks like a turd. <laughs> the bomber cannons again firing over here. I didn't look at chat earlier when I was talking about it, so maybe you guys talked about it already. Oh, Tato, attack round. Get him. Don't let him get you. Get him. Get him. Oh! <laughs> Six shot. I love it. And another one. Oh, my God. Tato's so good with that. And again? Okay, not again. I can't even tell if he lost one. It looks like Doubt was able to kill one of the Bombard Cannons. Is the Paladin still just moving their ability? Copy bears? What? Are you guys trolling me? For what reason? <laughs> I thought it was like... What? Real? No way. I, I need to see... I need to see a slower one. Speaking of, of slow, talk about these halves, man. These halves are so slow. Tata runs in. Tata runs out. Doubt just consistently chasing. And here we go. Finally, Doubt will be able to find... Nope, 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 nope. Paladin's just going to run away. Sucks to be you, Doubt. Sucks to be you. And Tato's just going to get these Paladins home. Oh, he might not, actually. He might not get these home. As he's now getting Siege Ram. Now, I think that's going to be the killer unit here. I think that if he's able to get Siege Ram and show up with that next wave with, like, 10 Rams, he could probably push those castles. Paladin is Paladin, as we say all the time. Very strong unit. But Tato's just... He, he's basically made this impossible for Doubt to come back. That's what it feels like. Now, Doubt could hold on. And he's stubborn, so he's he's going to try. But look at that KD. 500 kills for Tato. 283 units lost. This is obviously very advanced. But this will probably remind some of you of your days playing against the AI. When I used to play the AI, I would always have like a choke point where the AI would funnel units in towards me and I would get a lot of kills and feel very good about myself. You guys can probably relate. As here comes the siege ramp. Now we have skirms as well. Skirm, the ultimate unit against plumed archers and against halves. So that would probably force doubt into something like eagles. And eagles are very hard to come by when you do not have gold. Here comes the Siege Ram. Here comes the Skirmishers. Now, Plumed Archers do fairly well because of their Pierce Armor against Skirmishers. It's not the end of the world. And Halbs also do pretty well against Skirms if they can get in close. Still, the Skirms are going to trade pretty cost-effectively. But it is worth reminding you that, you know, maybe Doubt with these resources could hold on. Yeah, I used to have, I used to have a choke point running up a hill. And the AI would just stream units in to my castles and my bombard towers and my cataphracts and my janissaries and my Teutonic Knights and my William Wallaces. I would I would do it all in the scenario editor. Tato's gotta be careful here, guys, because siege rams do cost gold. Okay? Navy costs gold as well. He doesn't have many paladins remaining anymore. And as you can see, the plumed archers are doing a really good job. Plumed archers fire a whole lot faster than skirms do. And the help meat shield isn't too bad. Good raid here from Tato. But Doubt's still at 100 eco. He might lose like 10 or so more. But that's still completely fine for Doubt. He's got plenty of army in queue. Doubt not giving it up yet. But Tato maybe needs to, to stop streaming these rams in. I think he's trickling them a little too much. And the only thing I'm missing from Tato is he actually got Hussars back here somehow. Is some production buildings here. I think production buildings in the south in the south would be really really strong. William Wallace could kill like 200 militia by himself. <laughs> he used to do that in the editor. It's funny. Yeah, man. I just like to be clear. There's nothing wrong with that either. Like, I feel like some people are listening in. They probably do that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's fun. 
Majority of people who play this game are still playing single player in some capacity. So what gets really complicated in 200 pop games on a map like this is how you utilize your pop space. So for Tato, he's got 20 of his pop space on water, which means he either is going to be behind by 20 military on land, or he's going to be behind 20 eco on land. So basically, Dao can muster up everything to potentially hold, but if he ever gets to the shoreline, he's not going to be able to push back too comfortably. Yeah, I hope that makes sense for you. But yeah, it's just it's just the population breakdown. So it actually gives doubt an opportunity. And there is a world where maybe 20 Navy isn't enough to hold off plumes and halves and rams. This doubt is not going to get skirms. And Mayans have a unique tech, which gives their skirms extra bolts. Remember, Mayan resources last longer, so they can stay in this game a long time. And Tato selling a little bit of food. I like it. He, we should probably see him sell some of the wood as well. I guess you don't want to sell too much wood, but there's plenty here. He's not really spending too much gold. And there's the uh, Hocha. That is the unique tech we talked about with the Skirms. So if it's even Skirm v. Skirm, my and Skirms will be stronger. Woo! Magyar Hustler, thanks again, man, for the stars. Appreciate it. I think I've, I think I've missed... My Streamlabs thing is not showing all the subs. I think I saw a sub from, from Nick. Thank you, Nick, for the sub. Um, but yeah, sorry if I've maybe missed some of those names. It's been good seeing people in chat. Again, guys, 100% uh, of sub revenue goes directly to me on this platform. Uh, Facebook Gaming is doing that till 2023. So, it's just absolutely sick for the creators. So, if, if you want to support me in some capacity, this is definitely a good way to do it. Plus, it's super motivating uh, to see, you know, to, to see that that number. Um, it's weird. I'm very analytics driven. Uh, you know, viewership, sub count, comments. That's just kind of how the industry goes. So thanks to everyone who's supported so far. But more than anything, man, on a new platform especially, just happy to have you here. <laughs> For me, 10% of sub revenue goes to the Australian taxation office. I'm not sure that's how that works. Do you pay taxes on the money you send people? Pretty sure you pay taxes, you receive your money, and then you send money to me, and then I receive it. Then I pay taxes. <laughs> Which, believe me, isn't great, but I should say 100% before taxes, right? <laughs> that's just, that's life. Hmm. Mark, what's up? He says, do you know anything about sub seeing ads while watching VODs? I wrote in Discord. Yeah, so, so the unfortunate difference is, is that you do supporters or subs on this platform do still have the potential to see ads whereas on like twitch you'd sub the streamer would receive less but they, there would be no ads so uh you know there's there's suggestions i can't give you <laughs> uh for that but um thank you thanks for the sub regardless and unfortunately that as far as i know from what i confirmed with them is you still could see ads this is a ridiculous game. 190 pop for Dell. 190 pop for Tato. And look, the populations even. The populations are almost identical. It's just Tato's position is so strong. And he's going to get Onager now. And he's not really going to have a lot of golds to make Onagers. I think what Tato should do, honestly... I mean, he clearly he's going to go in and try and get some kills here. But how sick would it be... Oh, as he gets a big shot off! What if he takes out all the wood? Just literally starves Doubt out of resources and just Onager cuts all the wood. He is building up buildings here, so he is keeping Doubt away from this. Onager, number two, is about to pop out of that workshop. I mean, if he takes out a Treb, it's worth it. Even just taking out a Trebuchet is worth it. I don't know if you want to trade Onagers against Skirms necessarily, but Onager against Treb, certainly. Those are gold units Doubt's not going to get back. And, oh, big shots against the plumes. Those are other gold units that go down. Guys, Doubt is so stubborn here. <laughs> He's so stubborn. This feels so over. But he doesn't want to call it because his population is really high. And this is just a slog, man. Absolute slog. I, I, again, I think so perfect from Tato to finally take this area, finally build up here. It will be slow and grueling because the Mayan skirms, you can see all the extra bolts there, man. 
Mayan skirms are actually stronger than Tato skirms. And if there's a mass of plumes in here, the plumes will take care of anything like Hussar. Like, that's one of the reasons Tato is mixed in Onager. And Onager is definitely paid off so far. Just trickling them in every so often. Doubt's going to use the plumes against them, but... The Tato with 110 skirms in queue. 110 skirmishers in queue. So there will be plenty more where that came from. I think it would be nice for Tato is the occasional peel off with some rams. Occasional two or three rams to head off over here. Occasional two or three rams to head off over here. But ultimately, man, you set your gather point right here. You know that Dao can't really counter you. He does have the opportunity to make demos if Dao does counter him. And Doubt says, I'm not finished yet, buddy. Where's Doubt getting wood? He's got wood here. He's almost out of wood back here. He's got some wood up here as well. So D Doubt could definitely continue here. And there's also no castle here, guys. What a comeback that would be. If Doubt could get through and then over here and just get any villagers on the wood. Even just getting a town center up right now, a sneaky town center would be so good. Tricky, man. Uh, T90, would you be upset if I played in a community game drunk? Do not worry. I will not repeat the drunken oopsie game mistake. <laughs> um, <laughs> and someone said, pro tip, ask forgiveness rather than permission. Dude, live your life. As long as you can get into the game and you don't delay the whole community game setup process, live your life. I don't care what you're doing. You know, as long as, as long as, you know, as long as you're doing what you want to do, and, okay, that's not exactly true, because I'm not condoning massive crimes while playing community games. Just don't tell me what you're doing. <laughs> if you want to be drunk and talk about it, that's fine. But I'm not I'm not in charge of you, okay? <laughs> At least, not fully. I know I am in charge of community games. Okay, so I think Tato has got to be kicking himself like, how have I not finished this guy off yet? And Doubt's still somehow in this. Doubt's going to come down here with plumes. And he's going to pick off these villagers. Always oh, trying to. Tato even noticing that. We've got some rams. We've got some monitors. We've got some hussars. We've got some skirms. I definitely think Tato's got the right ingredients for success here. Remember, champions do cost some gold. So I think with it being mainly ranged units... And there's still being some plumed archers out there. You probably shouldn't be going for champions. Hussars are only food. And Doubt just refuses to quit. As we have the cannon galleons on the plumes. And I guarantee you Doubt's not focused on this. Because he probably doesn't realize this is a thing anymore. It's been a while. I don't know why this cannon galleon won't fire. Who wins? Is this not a Spanish cannon galleon anymore? Oof. I feel like they normally fire faster. I guess it's the projectiles are really fast and there's a lot of reload time in between. Yo, Frank, what's up, man? Okay, Doubt's population is dropping hard now. Doubt's population is finally dropping hard. He's down to 50 military. There's three castles in this spot and between the castles are the relics. If Tato can even just get the relics away from Doubt as he lands a big onager shot, that could end up doing it. That was stubborn before. He didn't want to call it. He was running through the middle. Losing unit after unit. But I think as you see the wood villagers start to migrate over here where the Hussars are. He's going to start to have to realize this is over. Even though he has the superior skirms. Even though he does have three relics. So does Tato of course. 1100 kills for Delp. Or uh, not for Delp. Sorry for Tato as he's starting to take out the barracks. Which means there won't be any halves. And this, is, this has been slow, but it's been methodical from Tato, who just has had a great idea of how to approach this map. Whereas Dowd, I think, Dowd kind of played this like someone who plays Arabia all the time. He just wanted to make land units and send it through. He didn't think water would be really a factor in this one. And I think he got punished by it. I think there are people who see both sides of it, right? Like, I think some people out there really like it when... The maps are different, and you have to approach it different ways, and I think Tato's is the king at that. Other people can relate. They're like, oh, you know what? I probably would have just made a million units and streamed it right towards the middle as well, because I wouldn't have known what to do. <laughs> and then there's the argument of, 
Can Mayans even compete with the water aspect? Well, the answer is, if you lose so much of the water in the mid game, then maybe no. But this whole game played out in such a way that it was all about Tato. It was all about the Spanish. And look at Tato. He's like, wait a second. He's not on wood down here. He's not down here. He might be over here. Check this out. <laughs> He's going to head right over there just to find Doubt's remaining villagers. And Doubt's adding more vills. Doubt has 45 villagers in queue right now. He's making more vills as he loses vills. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Tato. I honestly, at this point, do you guys understand why Highland wasn't a thing for very long? I remember a Highland game, and Highland was worse because there was actual elevation. So, like, think Doubt having these castles, but then he'd be on a hill. Okay. So there would be a lot more elevation for the defender. And I think even more wood. And and more gold in this map. Um, I mean, don't. it's been an entertaining game, but if this happened every time, it'd be crazy. Because the first couple months of Definitive Edition, there was no favorite map. So you would just get whatever. And I recall a game between Hera and Bact, where it was two and a half hours, and they literally flipped a coin on some coin flipping website to determine who would win, because they were just so tired. They didn't even care anymore. Great job from Tato, though. 83 farms, I think, is perfect. You don't need to go above that. Um, a lot of people like to go for, like, 90 or 100 farms so they can spam more house art. But you need to have about 20, 30 villagers on wood so you can still make skirms and so you can still make rams. So that's the key here. Um, it actually is more costly to make skirm and halb than it is to make Hussar Skirm, just because Hussar's only wood. So it should be easier for Tata to continue to do this. As Doubt's still not resigning! I don't know if he had, was tilted today, or if he just, you know, didn't realize his population, but he, he's surely going to be finished off soon. This town center is going to be denied. Tato sees everything. It's like he's got all vision at this point. The Rams are slowly taking out the buildings. Wouldn't surprise me to see some Trebs. Maybe some bomber cannons come out once Tato gets the gold for it. And he's just slowly pushing Doubt down. I think this is where Doubt has to call it. 90 pop for Doubt. He's going to complete the TC as he's going to continue to lose pop. Doubt is very well aware as he calls the GG that this game all fell apart in early Imperial Age. But it is not often you see a game like that between these two players. And I just felt like it was so... It was so interesting how Tato viewed this. Like, look at the timeline, for example, right? So he had... The, the, his priority was military in Castle Age. Doubt's priority was water. And so Tato gives up water to take land. And then he holds land, he takes land, and then he gives up land, and Doubt thinks, oh, I'm good, we just won the game. <laughs> but he gave up land to take water, which then puts Doubt to a spot where he's like, oh god, I can't use all this land military? Okay, let's go water. And then Doubt goes water, and Tato takes land. And then Tato had the full control. It was so good, man. It was so good from Tato. It was so strong. Uh, 1,400 kills. 900 deaths. He definitely took the better of the engagements. If you look at the resources collected that game, Tato had a lot more food, a lot more gold. Uh, wood count was fairly similar. Stone count, doubt, was way ahead. How did he get more stone, actually? Did he have additional stones on his side or something? I guess it's possible some extra stones were added on Doubt's side, and I didn't notice that. But that shouldn't really be the case with this type of a game. It's not like Doubt collected resources on Doubt's side. Or a Tato side. It could also be just longer lasting resources with Mayans. Maybe that helped because he would have more stone there. Uh, whoops. Um, you, know, you can see what the uptimes were and kind of brings us back to our other points. Doubt going fast feudal to win the water and then Tato going fast castle to win the land. But I just thought it was a really unique game. Definitely not one of those games that was that was like the other ones that'll go up to the channel where it's uh, on a lands map. Um, with lots of armies in Feudal Age. No, it was more about other things. I feel like this was more strategic and less execution than some of the other maps, but I think the additional strategy is always something you want. And if you're curious about the APM, you have it there, but that was a solid game. And I just love how they started it off and they're already trash talking. You gotta love watching these two.